So we're still talking about Star Trek The Wrath of Khan and the tried and true Constitution class refit Enterprise. Join me today as we show you how to print that one today. See you guys inside. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. So, a week or so ago, you guys saw me talk about the Miranda class starship. Try and true workhorse of the Federation. But one of my favorite Star Trek movies is Wrath of Khan. And that's where we first see, actually see on screen, is a Miranda class starship. And we pit it against the 20 year old Enterprise that's been refitted, upgraded for the big movie screen. And with that, how could I print the Miranda class? without printing the Constitution class refit. This is one print, extremely lightweight, very little infill, very strong, and it lacks none of the features that you find with a bunch of the older model kits. This is about one 537 scale in my hand right now. So it is definitely a very large model how I printed it, but this model is really cool because it is very scalable. So you can get it down to smaller sizes. Matter of fact, I've used this model before, and when I talk about smaller sizes, um, this was printed on an Ender 3, and it came out beautifully. So, of course, I took it bigger, and actually, I think there were a few comments of asking to see this girl bigger. So, we did. And one of those things, if I find a really good Constitution TOS model, I probably will print it too because. This one came out great. It's got the photon torpedo pod. The navigational deflector came out well. The detail, the docking pods on the sides, the details in the warp nacelles. The only thing I didn't like, and this was probably my printer more than anything, was there is some grooving in the warp nacelles from the process. Because when I print them, I print them like this. Straight up and down. And that lets me do supporting, lets me make sure I get the solid hull done and everything done, as I will show you guys here in the cure here in a bit. But all in all, the Enterprise that started it all, even with the refit, before we blew it up and searched for Spock, it came out really well. And it's one of those things, I want to revisit this model because, well, growing up as a kid, this is what I saw on the screen. Um, this was in the theaters. Uh, so it's, it's always been a very important one for me. So we're gonna print this guy today. This is what we're working on. Um, I know I didn't get to paint the Reliant for the last video. I'm probably not gonna get to this one, but I do wanna talk about some of the ingredients we used first. This was done with a CR10 Max in one piece. You can definitely scale it down for the smaller printers or check out my mesh mixer video on how to cut this up to be printed in smaller pieces. But this is actually Sunlu filament that we're looking at right now. I also printed an inland. That one's over there, <laughs> uh, up on the wall but I do intend on actually painting this one because it came out so well. Um, it's even got a light texture of the NCC-1701-A, which is, comes ingrained on the model because that's one this is actually modeled after, um, which if I remember correctly, I believe was the USS Yorktown after its refit was recrescent the Enterprise. So definitely a great model. Um, gonna have a lot of fun with it, putting it together, but we'll, what we'll do, again, Kira, print, and we'll take a look at the final product so you guys can get a closer view of this ship. So, hope you guys enjoy this. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before and haven't hit that subscribe button, hit it down below. Let us know you like the content. That way you also get notified when the con new content comes out every Friday. And also, just if you leave that like, it really does help out the channel and help us get seen. Um, and if you share, I appreciate it. If you know a Trekkie or you know someone wanting to get into 3D printing, definitely let them know about the channel and let them know about the video. So that we can get this out here and get more people doing this fun hobby. So, hope you guys enjoy. Let's hop over to that computer and let's get this one printed. All right guys, so let's start the Kira portion. And looking at this model, you can see that it is very well done. Um, it's just a not an actual picture of what you're gonna print on the website. So this one is by Fleet Printer. Um, not up here very long, couple years. Five models in this one. So they did a really cool thing for you guys on this one. Unlike the Miranda that is only one model, 
they created the STLs of it broken into three pieces. So smaller printers can print. Um, you have the full print, which is what we are doing today. And then also the readme file as well. So this is the one we're doing. Link will be down in the description. So let's hop over to Cura. And of course, when I load it in, it's huge. <laughs> we're again going to, pr I printed on a CR10 Max. Now how I do this guys, that I have found works for Federation Starships. Tilt it face up. I have found this works really well for me. On average for the CR10 Max, we can usually get 65% to work. Zero, zero, and zero. But she's a Constitution class. She's a bit taller. View, camera position. Uh, come on. Don't don't be this way. Front view. So she's a bit taller than what we can do. So in actuality, I think I had to cut this one down to 50% to get it to, to take. There we go. 50%. Now the CR10 Max is a bit taller than your standard CR10. So you just got to work with your printer to get it to fit. We can scale this thing down to 30% and put it on an Ender 3 and do it in one print, which is the smaller model you'll actually see here you'll actually see. But I mean, I did this on the CR10 Max because I wanted a big, long model. Um, similar to the recent kit that just came out, I think is 537 size. So we've got it on there, but as you can see, there is a lot of detail and a lot of parts that are gonna need support as they build up. So again, I go to that marketplace, plugin, custom support, gives you this wonderful button right here and you can go in and start supporting all those areas that just scare you that if they're gonna print or not. And then also with a curvature, I like to build it out because I will use a ra I used a raft on this because I'm going up tall, but I'm going thin. So I want to have as much plate adhesion as I want. We definitely want to get some up on the warp nacelles. I went ahead and threw one here at the start of the bridge dome and of this of the sensor dome on the bottom just to give it some more strength. Um, and you can even, if you want to, because you're combining parts and don't want vibration, you can even get some nice supports in on the warp nacelle pylons. So, and I'm actually going to throw a little bit more on here because the navigational deflector, we want that to come up. And there you go. We've got it on our plate. We're ready to slice. This is how I do it. Does it mean I'm right? No. But I get consistent results printing Federation Starships this way. Um, I printed this model twice with my setting, with this setting, so what I did here, and she came out beautifully. Um, like I said, there was some vibration on the warp nacelles, but that's because the printer was going back and forth, and even with Z-Hop, it dragged a little bit. So it's a line. I have to do a little bit of sanding. Not a terrible thing. Something that can easily be fixed. And that's, that's kind of a key thing here that, you know, as long as it can be fixed, that's awesome. But we definitely want this to build up correctly and not have a sag or something like that happen. So, but I mean, just the detail on the model. I mean, look at the engineering section. Here, let's actually slice this. So that custom support plugin is great. I love the plugins in Kira that are out there. A lot of them are free and they really do help out. So definitely look at your plugins. I've got a plugin for Raspberry Pi. I've got a Wi-Fi plugin for my Odin. Um, there's all kinds of plugins that you can add to make your Kira a little bit better. And this is a big model the way I'm doing it uh, with it being 50% uh, its normal size and going on a CR10 max at its full height. Now I could probably have angled it and gotten a little bit bigger, but all in all truth, like I said, I get consistent print results going this direction. Um, you probably could flip it over, but I don't know if I'd want that much of the saucer section weight dragging on the top. And I don't know if it would actually give me better consistent warp nacelles. So 508 grams, two days print time. That's about correct for what it took me. Oh, and I accidentally hit that. I accidentally added a custom support, which threw this completely off. Um, we'll just do a quick run through the settings. Uh, if you guys have any questions, this is the CR10 Max setting. My infill, I only did 10% um, on the one that you guys were seeing, and it came out beautifully. Now, like I said too, let's head back over to prepare. Let's kick down to the oven. 
So the Odin is about the same size as, as a Ender 3. I love my little Odin. Um, I keep adding custom supports. <laughs> so I'm actually going to clear the build plate. And I'm going to bring that model back in. It'll take a moment to load it in. But let's look at the Odin. So definitely a much smaller build area. And this will come up any moment now. But also, one of the cool things is we can look at the pieces here if we want. I don't know why this is taking so long. Let's see if we can pull in a different piece. Or just crash Curie all together. Hey, we crashed it! We'll get Cure reopen and we'll take a look at it. I am currently using Cure 4.10.0. It has been consistent for me. I've had some problems ever since I, I did install 4.11 and I had some problems with it and I just could not get a consistent print. So here we're looking at the pieces and it's still too big for the Odin by itself. But if I were printing this, this is just me. This seems interesting on how to print Maybe if I was doing it with the CR30 at the 45 degree angle, I would do this. But for me, there's going to be a lot of support going right here. So I would probably try the rotation and then bring it in zero, zero, zero. And I would probably print like that personally and put some custom supports right there and let it build up. Now, of course, this doesn't fit our build plate. We need to shrink it. So I'm going to shrink it 50%. Oh, looky there. Fits just fine. And, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. We'll bring that back to 50%. And we'll choose the move icon. We'll scoot you over to the edge. And let's get the refit forward. See how that comes out. Oh, my goodness. But that's exactly how I would probably print it. Let's kick it down. 50% so that's one of the things you want to look at all your pieces before you print one to make sure you're printing all the same percentage or else you're gonna have a bad day and no whoa hey I did that again I keep forgetting to hit the button to, to shift it downward so let's get that down to zero and looky there 50% working real good on the Odin looking pretty so there's the forward the mid and then there's one part that's left that's the aft it's not going to fit on here but it's got the rest of the pylon and the warp cells and it displaced everything which is fine so again cut it down to 50 percent so really you can print almost the same size model <laughs> i keep doing that uh you can print the same size model essentially on the ender 3 or odin that i'm printing on well, maybe not. Because that, uh, it's just a little too long, isn't it? So this is why I say check all the parts. To get this one to fit, you're probably going to have to kick down 40%. So the biggest you can do is 40%, which is 10% less than what I, what I did. Now, you could try angling it sideways and all that. See if you can get the larger size. So angle it, pull it over here blow it back up to 50 you probably can get it oh looky there uh oh oh hey do what i tell you not what i do <laughs> all right so 50 percent. can we eat this in uh it just won't eat in it's just a little too big a little too wide well, that's a shame but you can get it probably down at 48 percent and do what you want. Okay, looky there. 48% just happens to fit. Um, if you guys want to see me do this on the Odin with these three pieces, definitely let me go down in the comments below. I am curious to try, actually, and put them side by side, because the Odin 5, oh, I love this printer. I feed it whatever filament. It just sits there and goes to town. I have not clogged it. Four bolts, connect some cables, and then... Uh, Level your bed, install your software, you're ready to rock and roll. Great little printer. Christmas is coming. I definitely recommend it. But this is how you get it sliced. So we're going to hop over to the printer. We're going to get this thing printed. And I will catch up with you guys with the final product on the other side.
All right, guys, that's the print. We're done. So all in all, took about two days on the printer. Very light infill. I did my walls a bit thicker to reduce the infill, um, especially with the warp nacelles. I didn't want them heavy because I didn't want the pylon to just snap from weight, um, which one of the older model kits, um, I think it was a Star Trek, uh, the Undiscovered Country model kit, you can never put it together because the pylons would just buckle under the weight because the nacelles were too heavy because it was a big kit. But all in all, pretty awesome. A little bit of resin filling, especially like here in the deflector dish, smooth it out, paint her up. It's going to look really cool. Stick around. Definitely if you want to see some painted one of that, check out Instagram. Keep following me over there. You may see, um, you actually see a lot more of my painted and finished products over on Instagram than you do here on the channel. If it is something you want to see on the channel is me actually painting, going through the whole process, comments. Let me know what you guys want to see. Um, if there's a ship you want printed or want to see how to do, let me know. I mean, you guys can tell I do armor. I do all kinds of stuff. So definitely leave those comment below what you're interested in. Thank you guys. And we'll see you in the next video.